How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. This is part 9. Completing the engine bearers by drilling four holes and tapping them for VA to take some long mounting bolts. I use some cyano adhesive to harden the threads in the wood. I also show a very cheap and extremely useful cutting tool and finally the copper tube that I will be using for the condenser. What I'm doing in this clip is using my very long Phillips type screwdriver that I've had for many years to push through the holes and make a mark in the wooden bearers. Is it a Phillips screwdriver or is it a Posidrive screwdriver? Well by the look of the tip I definitely think it's a Phillips, it's very sharp and pointy. It's very useful, it can be used on very small screws. It's not really the right shape for the larger type Posidrive screws. But as you can see in this clip, it's really good for making marks in pieces of wood that I'm going to mount engines on. The next job using my Proxon motor tool in the Proxon drill stand is to drill the holes. One eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters is tapping size for 4BA. Initially, the plan was to drill these holes about halfway down the bearers and use some 4BA machine screws. I soon realized that these machine screws just weren't going to be long enough, so what I'm doing here is drilling all the way through the bearers. Once I'd done that, I threaded all four holes all of the way through using a 4BA tap. I'm not going to show the full sequence, it was boring enough doing this job and I really didn't think it would get much better if I showed it in video form. And here I'm threading another of the four holes in the two bearers. Do you see what I mean? Not very thrilling, is it? It's not going to win a BAFTA. But anyway, this is the last part of it. Very much shortened. On the bench you can see the machine screws that I was originally going to use, but they're far too short. This is a very powerful engine for its size and it needs bolting down tightly to the hardwood bearers. In this clip I'm using cyanoacrylate adhesive to harden the threads in the holes. This stuff is medium viscosity and it's a little bit thick. I would normally use the low viscosity very runny stuff but I haven't got any of that. I applied plenty of cyanoacrylate adhesive into the holes and then using a screwdriver point I spread it out into the threads within the holes. Once the adhesive had fully cured, I screwed a bolt in as a test and it went in nice and tightly. This clip is running at a double speed and I'm using a ratchet type wrench that fits in the end of this special socket screwdriver. What I'm doing here is using a handheld electric drill in a very low speed gear and only just pressing the trigger to countersink the underside to allow me to use the socket to tighten the bolt fully into the bearer. A quick test of the hole diameter tells me I've drilled the hole using the right drill bit. I've drilled this clearance hole exactly the same depth in both bearers. To illustrate this, here's the right hand bearer and here's the left hand side one. All I need to do now is screw three of the four bolts into these holes all the way in, so the bolt doesn't stick out below the bearer. You may have noticed that I've only screwed in three of the bolts, there's a reason for this. The holes in the bearers are not in the same position on both of them because the holes in the engine are not in the same place. This side's okay, I can just use two 4BA nuts. As you can see I'm using some washers but this is only a temporary thing. It's so I can sit the engine on the bench and time it. Even with the washers in place, the flywheel is still touching the bench, but it doesn't really matter because when I time the engine, I will sit the bearers on a piece of card which will lift the flywheel clear of the bench and the piece of card will also soak up some of the oil. When it's in the boat, it will be okay because the bottom part of a hull is not flat. This was plan A, using a machine screw on the corner where there isn't much room. There's not enough room for a nut. Which leads me nicely to the next part of the video. A while ago I bought a really cheap diamond cutter that fits in my Proxon motor tool. I also use it in the lathe, it's incredibly useful for cutting very fine slots, or in this case, cutting a 4BA bolt. It doesn't take long, and although the cutting wheel doesn't get very hot, the bolt does. But this is not the best bit. What I'm doing here is cutting a slot in the top of the bolt. 
This is one of the full length bolts as you can see because I'm holding it in a pair of pliers and totally by eye I'm cutting a slot in the top. Once I've cut the slot I widen it slightly to take a screwdriver blade. Very unengineering like I know but my channel is not just about machining. I like to save time wherever possible and this is a very quick and simple way to make a thin slot in a piece of metal. And the best thing about it is no setup time, as long as you can find a suitable pair of pliers to hold the piece of metal that you're cutting, and the rest of the job is just do it by eye. But don't forget to start the slot slightly over to one side, because you're going to widen it. If you start exactly in the middle, you'll have to widen it at both sides, it's just easier doing it that way. And once I tightened up the bolt, the slot was in a really good position. On the screen at the moment is an exhaust condenser. As you can see, it's a little bit on the small side for this engine. I'm going to ask the owner of the engine to discard this condenser. I will make a much larger exhaust condenser for this engine using a piece of 3 inch diameter copper pipe. That's about it for this video, and I'm sorry that it's late today. I've been really busy. I'm having a major rejig of my workshop that's built onto the kitchen. I sold the lathe back to my friend from whom I bought it. There was nothing wrong with it, it was just a bit small. I'm going to bring my Myford ML7R from the main workshop down to the smaller workshop. Time has been spent assembling a kitchen base unit and putting a new worktop on it. And in exactly the same way as in the main workshop, the Myford ML7R will be sat on foam pads on top of this worktop. I'm currently having a major reshuffle in the workshop itself, so tomorrow three very strong men are going to arrive and move the Myford from the shed into the house. You'll see the details in a video shortly. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.